All right, we're now going to look at adding, subtracting, and multiplying radical expressions. Well, what we need to remember when we add or subtract anything, we have to have like terms. So for us, pretty basic stuff. If I wanted to do 3 plus 2, I could. That's 5. If I wanted to do 3x plus 2x, I would get 5x. Okay. Uh, I've just got to have those like terms. If I had 3x plus 5, I can't do anything. They're, they're not like terms. When it comes to a radical expression, the radical piece is what makes the terms like. So similar to this 3x plus 2x is 5x, if I had 3 root 2 plus 2 root 2, I would have 5 root 2. So that radical part, that square root of 2, is similar to that x there. That's what's making the terms like. So if I had a 3 root 2 plus a 2 root 5, I couldn't do anything. The two square root pieces are not the same, so I could not add them. And I know these are all addition, but same idea with subtraction. I need subtraction. Uh, I need like terms to go through and do subtraction also. So if I look at the ones that are up here on the board, I can definitely see that these two have the same radical. Both have a root 11. And then I look over and these two definitely do not. That's a different square root. And of course, I've got three of them there, but definitely not the same. If they're the same, I can combine them. So I've got 5 minus 8. That's negative 3 root 11. Had like terms there. I can combine them. So we want them to be the same. If not, I'd either I can't put them together or I've got some work to do. I need to make sure that the roots are always simplified. All of my radicals are simplified. So when I look at this second one, I know I can't just add them. It's not the same radical. But I look at that root 27 and even the root 12, those two roots can be simplified. Let's see, the 27, that's 9 times 3. So I've got my 4 out there. The square root of 9 is 3, so I've got a 3 coming out. And then that other 3 is staying in. So that would give me actually 12 root 3. So I've simplified that first radical. The second radical, 5 root 12. 12 is 4 times 3. So I've got my plus there. 5, square root of 4 is 2. And then I can't do the square root of 3. That's still inside. So we're simplifying the radicals like we've done before. 10 root 3, and when I get these simplified, I now have like terms, so I can't add them. I didn't know if I would have like terms or not when I started. Matter of fact, I could tell in the very beginning they're not like, but I didn't know if when I simplified them they would, they would be like. I still need to simplify them. I need all of my radicals in a simplified reduced format, similar to like we always write our fractions in a reduced format. When these were simplified, I ended up with like terms. So now I can put these together, 22 root 3. Easy part. I can see if they're like or not. If they're like, I can put them together. That should be the quick, easy part. The difficult part. Sometimes I've got to do some extra work to get them simplified. Anytime I can simplify a radical, I need to. Now look at the third one. The easy part would be, Definitely, they're not, none of them are the same. I can easily see that. So I can't combine those radicals or those terms. But I look at each one individually, and I can do some simplifying. So that's going to be the more difficult part, the time-consuming part. 50, that's 25 times 2. So I've got my 9. Root 25 is 5. Still got the 2 inside. So 45 root 2. So I'm just going through and methodically simplifying each term one at a time. So I've got the first one done. Minus all right, 45, that's 9 times 5. Give me 3. 
Square root of 9 is 3. 5 still in, so minus 9 root 5. It's that middle term. I go to the last one. I see the root 8. 8 would be 4 times 2. Got minus 6. Root 4 is 2. Still got a 2 inside, so that would be minus 12 root 2. So I've simplified each of the three terms. That's where most of my work's coming in. Now I look at the terms individually and I try to see if I have anything that's like. And I do have two like terms here. I got the first one and the third one. Those both have the root 2. So I can combine those. 45 minus 12 be 33 root 2. And then minus 9 root 5. There's my simplified solution. I was able to combine a couple of them. It does not matter what order they're in. So you could write this as negative 9 root 5 plus 33 root 2. Either way would be correct. But I need to make sure I can combine the ones that I can combine. Okay. Now, let's bring in another example for add and subtract with variables in it. Negative 3 times 75x cubed plus 7 root 27x cubed. It doesn't matter if they have variables in it or not. I can still quickly tell if they're like or not. These are definitely not like. I can see the x cubed, but 27 and 75 are, are not the same value. So I don't have like radicals. I still need to go through my simplifying process. So I look at my first one. 75 is 25 times 3. So I've got my negative 3. Root 25 is 5. I've still got a 3 in there. And now my x cubed. Square root of x cubed. 2 goes into 3 one time. So 1 coming out, 1 staying in. That gives me negative 15x root 3x. We're going to have a plus there and go for the other term. So remember, it doesn't matter if I end up with like terms or not. I've still got to have them simplified. Right? Hopefully, I get some like terms. I can combine them. But that's not always going to happen like we saw over here in number three. We did not have all like terms. Still needed them simplified. So let's work on this 27x cubed. That's 9 times 3. So I've still got my 7 out there. Root 9 is 3. Still have my 3 inside. x cubed. We're going to have that 1x out and 1 in. So that would be 21x root 3x. So then we investigate the variable and the root part. Okay, so this one's got a root piece and a variable. Remember, if we have variables, we have to have the same variable for it to be a like term. And these two now are definitely like terms. They both have an x root 3x. So I can combine those coefficients. Negative 15 and 21 is 6x root 3x. And that's about all I can do. So anytime we're trying to combine radicals through addition and subtraction, I need like terms. If they're not like, again, can be pretty obvious to see not like versus like. I still need to make sure they're all simplified. So I might have to go through some extra steps to get them simplified. That should be the longest part of the process. Multiplication. Multiplication just involves a distributive property. So I've got a singular term sitting out here, 2 root 3, and then times a binomial. We have done the distributive property many times. Typically, it just looks like this for us. 2 times 3x minus 5. You have a distribute. 6x minus 10. I could even throw an x out in front. Let's say we want to do like 3x squared times 2x plus 7. 6x cubed. Plus 21x squared. I'm still distributing. 
So side by side meant multiply, that's our distributive property. When I see radicals, it's still a distributive property. I'm seeing a monomial term, two root three, times a binomial. So I'm still distributing that two root three to both terms. When we're multiplying with radicals, what we want to remember is inside with inside, outside with outside. So when I look at this 2 root 3 times 4 root 2, outside with outside, so that's 2 times 4 is 8. And then inside with inside, 3 times 2 is 6. So I'd have 8 root 6. Then positive times a negative, that's a minus. I've got a 2 root 3 times a 5. So outside with outside, 2 times 5 is 10. And then I would just have a root 3. I don't have a radical piece, a square root, sitting there to multiply that 3 by. Just tagging along there. Kind of like when you distributed an x. See, that would be 6x squared and then minus 10x. That x just tagged along. We did 2 with the 5, x. Here we did 2 with 3, x and x. Okay. So I'm keeping that radical piece together and those outside coefficients together, but still, same old distributive property. Let's look at a different multiplication. Remember, we said this all the time in class. Most of the time, it's just the looks that get worse. It's not changing your processes. So now I've got a binomial times a binomial. You have done this. Most recently, it would be something like this with x. It's say 2x plus 3 times 5x minus 2. Where I go, all right, there's 10x squared. There's minus 4x plus 15x minus 6, and then I combine like terms. We've done that many times. Same idea here. I've got a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to take that first term, 3, distribute to that other binomial, just like we did this 2x to those two terms. So 3 times 4, 12. 3 times 6, root 3. So 3 times 6 is 18. So plus 18, root 3. Again, remember, Outside with outside, three times the six, inside, no inside. Pick up the second one, second term, that negative five root three, just like we did over here with this three. <clears throat> so outside with outside, negative five times four, negative 20, root three. Negative five times six, negative 30, root nine. Three times three is nine. Outside with outside, Inside with inside. Now we look for some like terms or any simplifying that we could do. Let's see, that would be 12. Those two are like. So minus 2 root 3. And then minus, well, the square root of 9 is 3. So that's really minus 3 times 3, so minus 9. I could simplify that radical on the end. And that's going to leave me with a couple more like terms. I have 12 minus 9 is 3 minus 2 root 3. I ended up with a 12 and 9 that were like. Still, though, distributed property. We just had two binomials there. Another look. This time we'll throw a variable in here just to get a little bit different look. Let's go 3 root 2 minus 5 root x to an x squared. So now I've got a square outside a binomial. You've done this before. It just looks different with radicals. So here's how you saw it in the past. Let's say we had 3x plus 2 squared. 
first thing we did, or you did, was you wrote it twice. And then it's back to the same process of that distributive property you did before. And then getting my like terms together. So when I see that square, first thing I want to do, write it twice. So 3 root 2 minus 5 root x times 3 root 2 minus 5 root x. And then I will be going through my distributive property just like we did back here, number six. So again, remember, outside with outside, inside with inside. So three times three is nine, root four. Times two to four. We're gonna have three times five, that's negative 15, root two x. Second term, negative 15, root 2x. And negative 5 times 3, and then x times 2. And our last one here, plus 25, negative 5 times negative 5, root x squared. And then we're seeing what we can simplify. So root 4 is 2. 9 times 2, there's 18. Okay, these two are like terms. They both have a root 2x. So minus 30 root 2x. On that tail end, I've got my 25 outside. But the square root of x squared is x. That becomes 25 times x, which is just plus 25x. I look at the three remaining terms. I don't have anything like, so I can't combine anything at this point. If there was, I would. Notice on the one previous, we ended up with a couple more like terms after simplifying we could put together, but not in this case. So remember, add and subtract. I need like terms. Multiplying, same distributive property we've done before. We just need to remember inside with inside, outside with outside. Even if I saw, say, just two radical expressions multiplied by each other without any plus or minus, something like this, 2 root 3 times 5 root 7. Outside with outside, 10. Inside with inside, 21. And then I look to simplify, and I can't simplify that 21. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't.